Hey guys, Hannah and Mike here with Delta. Today we're installing a bathroom faucet, but not just any bathroom faucet. This one has hands-free technology that's perfect for your germy bathroom. Now you may be familiar with Delta's Touch 2O technology in the kitchen. You know, you can touch it on and touch it off. Well, their XT technology brings it to the bathroom too with the perk of being totally hands-free. Touch 2O XT means you can put your hand anywhere near the faucet and it will turn on. You know how some faucets have that single infrared sensor that you have to get your hand perfectly under to activate? Yeah, I can never get those to work. Well, you won't have that issue with this one. It senses when your hand is near the faucet and turns on the water automatically. Yeah, it's super convenient and even better, it has TempSense technology too, so you can always see, not just feel, the temperature of your water. Today we're installing the Compel faucet, but Delta has a variety of designs and finishes to fit your style and decor. All right, we can go on and on about how cool this faucet is, but let's show you all how easy it is to install. Now before we get started, there's a couple tools and supplies you're going to want to grab. Two adjustable wrenches, some safety glasses of course, a bucket, and a towel for some light cleanup. You may also need a flashlight in case it's dark underneath your cabinet, and also the included wrench in your packaging. With all that, let's get started. The first step is dropping in the faucet. Now, if you have a four inch three hole sink configuration, you'll need to use the escutcheon included in the faucet to cover the extra holes. If you have a single hole sink configuration and you just like the way the escutcheon looks, you can certainly use it. Now, the first thing I've done is I've fed this white gasket that's included with your faucet over our supply lines and our wire, making sure that this tag doesn't get ripped, the gasket doesn't get broken, and that nothing is pinched or crimped. Now there's no adhesive on the gasket, it just sits in the bottom of the faucet, just like so. And next, I've fed our escutcheon and our black gasket over the supply lines, again, making sure nothing is pinched or crimped. Now you'll notice there's two smaller holes on the escutcheon. The center hole is for the lift rod, and the outer hole is for the mounting stud. I wanna make sure that those are lined up. Perfect. Okay, now it's time to drop in our faucet. Since I have a single hole sink configuration, I'm not gonna use the escutcheon. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and then we'll pick back up there. Okay, I've taken the escutcheon off. Now before I set this in the sink, I'm just gonna make sure that the gasket is still on there, nice and tight, looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna feed our wires and our supply lines down into our sink, making sure again, nothing is pinched or crimped. I'm making sure that that tag doesn't get ripped off. I'm gonna use our TempSense light as a guide for centering. Okay, that looks good. Now we're ready to tighten it up. Now that Hannah's dropped our faucet in place, I'm gonna secure it to the bottom of our sink using our mounting assembly. Now you'll notice one side has a rubber face and the other side has a metal face. I wanna make sure the rubber face is up and the metal face is down. To secure it, I'm gonna slide it over the mounting stud through this little hole. Then I'm gonna use this included wrench that came with your packaging. It has a little nut already preloaded. If this came loose, just go ahead and find that nut and pop it back in there. Basically, the mounting assembly slides over the stud, followed by this wrench and nut behind it to keep everything in place. So, I'm gonna reach up here, and first with my assembly, and you'll notice one side of the assembly is kind of like in a crescent pattern, has an open side. I wanna make sure all my wires and tubes are in that opening and nothing's getting pinched as I secure this up the stud. I'm gonna use my wrench, thread that bolt onto the stud, and I'm gonna tighten everything down, tight to the bottom of the sink or my countertop. Again, as I tighten this, I wanna make sure that the mounting assembly isn't pinching any of my wires or any of my tubes. All right, now I've got that snug. Before I tighten this down all the way, I wanna make sure everything is square and straight up top. I'm gonna to give it the last couple turns to lock it into place. All right, great. Now, I wanna make sure I keep this wrench because we're gonna need it a little bit later. Next, we're gonna install our check valves to our supply lines. And you'll notice they come in two pieces. There's a little check valve insert that goes on the bottom of the check valve. I find it's easier to place the insert into my stub out first and then come in with my check valve on top of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and hand thread this down on the cold side. All right, once I get down towards the bottom, I wanna tighten it one more full revolution. The way I can tell I'm gonna go once all the way around is there's actually a little bit of writing on one of these faces, so I'll keep an eye on that and use my adjustable wrench to turn it once more. A little bit more. 
All right, perfect. Now, I'm gonna connect my supply lines. And you can tell my PEX supply lines are color-coded here. Red for hot, blue for cold. I'm gonna start with my cold side. So, I have a little bit of extra length here to my supply line, so I have two options. I can either loop it up and around, but I don't wanna loop it any tighter than about eight inches across. So, in this case, I'm actually gonna do more of a spiral or a helix motion to bring it down to the top of my check valve. Then I'm gonna use my free hand to hand tighten it on the, to the top. All right, that's pretty good. Next, I'm gonna tighten it down again with one full rotation. Now, I wanna hold the bottom of my check valve with a second player of pliers or another adjustable wrench just to hold it in place because we don't wanna tighten that connection up anymore. Again, I'm gonna give it one full rotation on the top here. And you'll notice there's one face that has a diamond pattern on it. You can kind of keep that in mind as a reference to see exactly when you've gone around one full rotation. All right, perfect. We're all connected on the cold side. We're gonna repeat the same steps for the hot. All right, next we're gonna flush our lines. Now, I always like to flush my lines whenever I'm doing a new faucet install, just to make sure there's no debris that got caught in there that could cause a flow issue down the road. So, to do this, I'm gonna begin by making sure that the handle on the faucet up on top is in the off position. Next, I'm gonna slowly turn on my stub out supplies. There's one for cold, and same for the hot side. And I've got my bucket here, and you'll notice this little sprayer hose up under the sink. Now this is where the water's gonna come out as soon as Hannah turns the handle on up top. So I'm gonna hold my bucket as close to the sprayer hose as I can get it and then with my free hand, angle it into the bucket. I'm gonna run this for about 30 seconds. All right, Hannah, I'm all set. All right, got our lines all flushed. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, now it's time to connect our solenoid assembly. Solenoid assembly has a blue clip on the top and another hose on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and push this up into our outlet tube and then clip it into place. So, begin by giving it just a little bit of pressure to get it up there and then the blue clip will hinge and snap right into place and then give it a slight little tug down to make sure you've got a good connection. That feels good. Next, I'm gonna take my sprayer hose. I'm gonna push it into the bottom of the solenoid assembly. Just like that. I'm gonna use my second blue clip to snap it on from the side. Again, you'll hear it snap into place, and then I like to give it just a very light tug down to make sure it's got a good tight connection. All right, now we're gonna take our sense wire. It's got this little hole in it, and this is gonna slip over that mounting stud that we used previously. To hold it in place, again, I'm gonna grab my delta wrench that came included with your packaging and my second nut. Go ahead and preload it. I think it's always easier to preload it in there. Now I'm going to feed my wire up over my mounting stud followed by the nut to hold it in place and tighten everything down. I'm going to slip it on over the mounting stud and use my delta wrench with my second nut. All right, now I'm giving that just a a little bit of a hand tighten. All right, I've got that nice and tight. Sandwich that sense wire between those two nuts. And one thing I like to do is actually leave that wrench right up on that nut, so if I ever need it again, I know where to find it. Next, we're gonna take our indicator base cable, and we're gonna connect it into our solenoid unit. Now, it's the one that looks like a headphone jack, and it will have a little plastic cover on the end. We can go ahead and take that out, just like so. I'm going to connect it into the socket on the side of the solenoid assembly. You can kind of see it right here on the back. I want to make sure I push it all the way in to get a nice tight connection. All right, now that we've got that connected, Hannah's going to prepare our batteries and we're just about done. Now it's time to load our batteries. The battery box comes with an adapter that allows you to use the included AA batteries. If you don't want to use the included batteries and you'd rather use C batteries, you can use the box without the adapter, just load the batteries in. I am going to use the adapter since the AA batteries were included. Just put the adapter right in the box. 
I'm gonna use this guide on the outside of the box that tells me which direction to put the batteries in. Okay, great, now we'll go underneath the cabinet and put the top on. All right, now that I've got my battery pack, I'm gonna connect the top onto the battery pack, but we wanna make sure we're connecting it the right way. You'll notice that at the top of the unit, we've got the minus and the plus, and then the top, we have a minus and a plus. I'm just gonna match the plus with the plus, minus with the minus, push it down to place, maybe have to squeeze those tabs on the side, and then it should snap right into place. Now, position of this is very important. We don't wanna to try to stand it on its end or hang it on the wall. You'll notice that it has two little feet on the bottom. It wants to just sit right on those feet like that, and then we're gonna place it in the back corner of our cabinet. Now, I'm not gonna do tight to the corner because it could cause a little bit of interference. I wanna make sure it has just a little bit of space around it on each side, and that's perfect. One of the last steps in our installation is going to be to attach our lift rod to our pivot rod. And I'm gonna use the included strap to do so. But first I wanna point out that you'll notice I've already replaced our sink drain. Now it's important to use the drain that is included with the faucet. This ensures that the touch functionality will work perfectly. So if you need some help with that, Delta has a video. Be sure to check that out as well. First, I'm going to loosen up my set screw and I'm gonna feed my lift rod right through the top of this strap. All right, perfect. Next, I'm gonna use my clip. Go ahead and put one side of the clip on my pivot bar. And I'm gonna choose one of these strap holes in the back. It really doesn't matter which one, just as long as I have enough room to make some adjustments if I need to. And then feed the other side of the clip on there. Perfect. Now, before I tighten up my set screw, I wanna make sure that my pivot rod and my lift rod are both in the full down position. All right, so that looks good. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hand tighten my Set screw to hold the strap to the lift rod. And I always think it's a good idea to, to give it just an extra half turn with a wrench, just to make sure it doesn't slide off of there. All right. Now one of the most important steps in any faucet install is checking for leaks. So to do this, there's a couple points I wanna point out. First is at the top and bottom of my check valves on my supply lines, and then also right up at these blue clip connections at the top and bottom of my solenoid assembly, just making sure I don't see any drips on any of the lines. And while we're down here, might as well also check to make sure that my drain looks good at all those connections. I don't see any drips down here, so I think we're ready to move back up top. That was a pretty easy install. Now let's check this faucet out. You can touch it on, touch it off, and the proximity is so cool, you can turn it on without even touching it. Super convenient, and it's gonna keep my faucet much cleaner. Yeah, and everything looks pretty good. We check for leaks underneath the cabinet. Nothing looks to be leaking up here, so that about wraps up this install. Now, if you're interested in exploring Delta's touch tool technology any further, be sure to check out some of our other videos. And as always, if you have any questions that we didn't answer here, be sure to call a customer service for help. Enjoy your new Touch 2 XT faucet.